Hello people of YouTube, so we have a new video today. This is um, for this particular USB drive that came in the, um, a few days ago. It's got a uh, problem here on the motherboard. Um, this chip got very, very hot. And this one component here, the one right here, uh, got so hot that it actually melted the, um, the plastic on this, on this USB. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can fix this. If we can't fix this, we're most likely gonna have to um, remove the both chips and move over to um, VNR. But this is a fairly easy controller to work with, this one here. So it's gonna be an easy job. Um, so I'm not gonna waste too much time trying to fix it. I, mean, I, already work, I already worked on it a little bit and I think it's gonna be a big waste of time to be honest uh, with you guys um, because I think the heat got so intense on this particular chip um, sorry, on this particular board that it actually completely killed the controller. So um, swapping controller is not an option. And I don't think I have a, a compatible donor. I think maybe I do, but I think that one's also got a problem on the on the board itself. So I think I think we're, gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and probably pull the chips off and uh, go over to uh, VNR and see what we can do. Okay, let's uh, mount this flash drive in here. Uh, this flash drive is double sided, so um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to heat it up from top and bottom, and that will um, actually release the ch chips on both sides. So, the best way to mount it that I find for me is doing it this way. I also have a bottom heater, just a preheater itself, which I sometimes use, but not always. The problem with the bottom preheater is when you use it, you really don't have much control of the heat, and I've tested them before. And what happens is, the heat is uneven. And with uneven heat, or heat that's not accurate, you can actually cause issues with the chips at a little, uh, later date when you're reading them. So, um, I prefer doing it this way. Some people prefer doing it at um, the bottom heater, some use uh, hot air steam, but my opinion, this is the best way. Now, if you don't have this tool, this um, infrared machine, then obviously the best option would be to use um, uh, the bottom heater. But this is what I have. This is what I'm going to use. Let's just adjust this thing here a little bit. Not the best angle for the camera, but that's what it's going to have to do. Now we can just start our um, profile. I'm using the same profile I use for um, smartphones, but this is fine. This chip is gonna lift way before we reach fourth step. So, here we go, step number one. What's, uh, what's really good about um, these infrared machines is they have a very big preheater in the bottom and, um, and a pretty good element on top so it doesn't take much for the chips to, to come off. I'm just trying now, we're, we're only in a step two, the chip's not moving yet but um, it will move soon as soon as the solder melt, you can already see some heat coming through here. Okay, so as we got the chips in, and we're gonna have to clean them a little bit. They actually look pretty good, to be honest with you. I just need a little bit of cleaning with the uh, soldering iron, but that's about it. And then we're gonna take them over to um, DNR into a, the reader and dump the chips and start the recovery process.
just literally want to just want to touch these so they're clean. I don't want to put too much heat through these chips because then we're going to end up with too many errors. So we're literally gonna, just going to touch them with the soldering iron. That should be good. Make sure there's no bridges. And things like that. When that's uh, nice and clean, we should get a nice read. It's actually really good. It's looking really good. There's some dirt on the inside. The connection and reader actually comes from the top here, <clears throat> so what's important is to have the top of the legs and the chips clean. That's all you really want to clean up because that's all that's all that's, that's all that's important on this particular chips. Obviously, it depends on the chip. Uh, you want to make sure the contact is good. So I think that's going to be it. We're going to put in a reader. I'm probably not going to film the dumping process itself I've done it in many other cases so uh, I think we're gonna skip this over I'm gonna resume recording of this um, once um, once I have the dumps created in um, in DNR and I'm gonna start building the structure I'm gonna go step by step and making this case uh, finishing this case okay first trip is in and we switch over to the uh, reader viewer and there's the data, so now we're gonna start building the structure. So I'm gonna switch over to the um, screen recording. Okay, uh, so before I start um, the VNR process, I wanna uh, direct some of you to, um, well, obviously our website, but um, there's some interesting things there. But um, you should definitely check out Rusalut's um, YouTube page. Um, there was a webinar there uh, not too long ago. I think it was a few weeks ago uh, So it would be these uh, five videos here Definitely worth watching if you're just starting to learn um, the VNR itself um, They're pretty long, but they're definitely worth um, time uh, Usually it goes through the entire process of recovering a um, few um, you drive so definitely uh, worth watching all right on to the video so we are here in VNR and obviously my support has run out so I'm not gonna get any help with this particular case but that's okay this case is pretty simple uh, I've done these chips before so this is a well-known controller so what do we have here we have the reader which uh, which is the reader obviously and then we have these elements here these elements here are individual crystals so these two crystals are these two crystals are from one chip and these two crystals are from the second chip so there's chip zero and chip one so what what we're gonna have to do now is which as I've already done I dumped these chips here so we have two individual crystals per per chip the next step is to start a uh, error correction um, now I haven't built a structure here yet because we have to build a structure uh, for these chips but I haven't built that yet because uh, I don't know the ECC size, I don't know anything. So the best way to do this is to put in a ECC element and then uh, we're gonna find code words. So I know this is SM, just so we don't waste time. Uh, we can start searching. So you hit hit find and this, this uh, feature here will actually find you the right um, error correction alg algorithm um, for this uh, for these crystals for these chips for these memory dumps 
um, this process is pretty accurate. It usually finds the exact um, uh, error correction code word, uh, so then we can correct the chips. Because the memory pages, memory blocks are all over the place, so we have to rearrange them. So here we go. So it's definitely not monolith. It's going to be this one, and we can see here SM3255, and we have ECC size um, 88. So I had a phone call. So we can stop this now, we don't need to go any further, so let me delete this element. So this particular ECC is, um, we can check the ECC map, and there's the map, it's all green. There's individual spots here and there that are that are red, that you can see here. So those, those ones we can correct at a later date. So this, these, this few elements here we can correct, so we're going to do this by uh, rereading the dump and I'm using read retry file, so I'll do this now. Um, I'm going to pause the videos because this will take some time. Um, it's not really interesting to watch, it's just kind of boring. Um, so we'll run this and then we'll see uh, what we get. Okay, now we can move over to the structure view, we, can, we have to build it. Um, so, so right now it's undefined, so we know that uh, since this is silicon motion, this is data area, that's 1024, and ECC is 88, and now we're just going to copy this over, okay, we're almost at the end here, so here's the structure being built, and we can move down a little bit so you can see the data, and this data is obviously scrambled, but by looking at this pattern, uh, you can see it's scrambled, but as you can see, our structure is, is fine because this is where the ECC ends and the data area begins again. So uh, I'm going to go right to the end. And now we have all this area. So this is the system area or the service area. So all we have to do here is add the, um, the service area and then we have to define uh, the service area itself. Okay, and the service area is. And here's the service area. And the LBN, which is two bytes. And that's what it should look like. So that's uh, corrected. Um, service area. Now, see all these dots here at the far end of the chip. Uh, these are errors that are not corrected yet. Um, I've actually um, reread the chips a few times because the first time um, the chip didn't look very good. There was a lot of um, a lot of uh, problems here, so we fixed that. So now, now we have the, we have the structure ready. He's gonna go in here, copy structure, and we're gonna paste it here. Paste it here. And paste it here. We can just double check if our structure is in here. And there's the structure. That's pretty much done. So now we're gonna move over to, move over to finding the XOR keys. XOR keys is to um, descramble the data uh, from these dumps. There are many ways to find. Uh, well, actually, there's two ways, I guess, that I know to find the XOR keys. There's one uh, tool that uh, was added in the latest update, or maybe there was in the, in the other update. But anyways, this is my method. This method uses a markers table to look at, um, at the beginning of the markers table to find the repetitive structure patterns and then um, taking a, a key from the database and applying it against uh, the dump and seeing if it matches. And uh, we can see here that it does match uh, this dump because you can see the blocks here, so it is working. So now we can just copy these um, these elements. We can add them to the um, to the dump to a structure, and we can add a pair. Um, here we had to um, double the uh, block size because it wasn't it wasn't correct. So um, I doubled the block size by uh, multiplying the numbers here. Okay. And now uh, we can continue on with the case. So I'm just going to copy all these structures and paste them onto the elements and add up the other pairs. 
And now I'm gonna check uh, the pair elements to see if the data is not mixed, because if it is mixed, then we're gonna do something else. But uh, the data doesn't look mixed um, by looking at the, the plane uh, in pairs in the same position. So we're gonna add Unite. And now we can move on to, um, I guess, the finish line by adding the markers table, uh, creating it, and turning on our ECC correction. Now this is going to slow down VNR a little bit because it's going to be using the CPU to uh, correct the, the errors. Uh, so the markers table is created. And now we just have to do, uh, enable inversion. Uh, we're going to go into the uh, markers table and uh, we're going to sort the blocks. I'm going to edit the, the markers table here quickly. And um, we're going to sort them. And good thing about sorting in, in, uh, on this particular case was that um, there was no missing blocks, so we, we're looking at the repetitive blocks here, and then there was nothing missing, and everything was in order, which was which is great for this case. So this made it a little bit easier uh, at the end. And obviously, this case is a bit sped up uh, because this would take a lot longer. This video is going to be be 30 minutes, but uh, uh, because it's sped up, uh, we're able to finish a bit quicker. So there is the data right here, and we we see all the green flags. I'm going to open one of the images just to see if it's good. And uh, yeah, it's good. No error blocks. So that's it. That's the case finished. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe for more. I'll have another one coming up soon.